Hello. In this video, I will continue with my review of the comments made by Dr. Zakir Nayak in his famous dialogue with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, the founder of the Art of Living Foundation. In my previous video, we covered Zakir Nayak's observations on the origin and meaning of the word Hindu and Hinduism. From there, Zakir Nayak proceeded to explain to the audience the meaning of the word Islam. So, let's see what he has to say about Islam. I'll display the text of his uh, words and uh, back it up with a voiceover. The voice will not be Zakir Nayak. Islam comes from the root Arabic word Salam, which means peace. Okay, so he says that the word Islam comes from the root word, root Arabic word Salam, which means peace. The word Salam can also be pronounced as Salam. But peace is not the only meaning of Salam. As with different languages, in Arabic too, the same word has different meanings or different connotations. So the word Salam or Salam means not only peace, but it can also mean submission. Peace as the meaning of Salam is appropriate in a society that is war tone or which is conflict. So you meet a person and he does salam to you, that means he has no hostility against you. So he is a friend. So that is the context in which the word salam can mean peace and it does mean peace in that context. However, in societies where there is no war, where there is no serious conflict, then it does not really make sense to keep saying salam or peace to people you meet. We do salam and salute. We, we salute our national flag. We don't, say, we don't mean peace to the flag. No, it makes no sense. We respect the flag because it is the symbol of the nation. So when you do salam to the national flag, you are basically acknowledging your submission to the nation, which is symbolized by the flag. So the word salam has two meanings, at least two meanings. One is peace, as Akin Naik said. Another is submission. So which of these two meanings, peace or submission, is more appropriate when we discuss the meaning of Islam? Some light on this question is thrown in Akin Naik's next comment. Let's see what it is. It is also derived from the Arabic word silm which means to submit your will to Almighty God. Okay, so there he is. He has now referred to a second root word for Islam and that is Silm, which he himself said, Zakir Naik himself said, means submission. Submit to whom? That we shall see in a few moments. So now we have two root words for the word Islam. Now note, Islam is a standalone word. It is not a conjunctive word. What do I mean by conjunctive word? A conjunctive word is a word that is composed by combining two words. Example, postcard. Post is one word, card is another word. They have two different meanings. But when they amalgamate into one word, they have the sum total of the meanings of those two words, those two root words, post and car. But Islam is not a conjunctive word. Islam is a standalone word. No portion of the of the spelling I S L M can be split, can be hyphenated. Conjunctive words, if you wish, can be hyphenated. Post hyphen car. But Islam is not a, a word that can be hyphenated. It is, it is one complete word. But it has two root words. So if the word Islam has two root words, independent of each other, and, it's, and the word Islam itself is not a conjunctive word, then 
which of the meanings of the root words should we take into account? Salam has two meanings, as we saw. Peace and submission. It may have more meanings, but we, we take these two as relevant to our context. So, Salam has two meanings, peace and uh, submission, and Sin has one meaning, submission, according to Zakir Naik himself. So, to make sense of the theory that Islam is rooted independently in these two words, independently, not compositely, then we have to take that particular meaning of those two root words which they both share, which are common. So, Salam means peace or submission, Sil means submission. What is the common meaning between the two words? Submission. So, we have to take submission as a meaning of Islam. So, Islam means submission. We will come back to this in a few moments on another point which Zakir Nayak will, uh, will, will raise. So, Islam means submission. Submission to whom is what we will now consider from a certain verse in the Holy Quran. The verse I refer to now is verse number 59 of chapter 4. It says, O you believe or, or O you believer, obey God and obey the messenger and also those in charge among you. So obedience is a corollary to your to, to, to submission. So according to verse number 59 of chapter 4 of the Holy Quran, the believer, that is a Muslim, has to submit to God, number one, number two, to the messenger, that I suppose is the uh, Prophet Muhammad himself, and number three, to those in charge among you. And who are in charge among us? It is some human being or some human beings who are in charge among us. And who are they? Our leaders. The political leaders and the religious leaders. Either as separate individuals or combined into one. So there are three entities to which or to whom a Muslim is supposed to submit himself. Now why did Zakir Naik not complete that definition? Why did he stop at only submission to God? Why he did not say, maybe he forgot or whatever. Your guess is as good as mine. Let's see what he says next. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. Okay, so now he says, in short, Islam me means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. From where does Zafi Nayak get this peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God? That too is incomplete anyway. But peace acquired by Kaase Aata Hai. From where did it come? It just means submission to three entities. God, Prophet and, uh, and those who are in charge of you. Okay, let me assume that I am wrong. Let me give the benefit of doubt to Zafi Nayak. Let's assume that Islam means Peace acquired through submission to God or peace acquired by submitting your will to the Almighty God. Let's take it at face value. Peace acquired. If this represents peace, then this has been acquired from this. And what is this? Submission. If this submission is, is not there, then this peace is not Islam according to Zakir Naik. So the root is submission. So, by Zakir Naik's own logic now, Islam means submission, more than peace. Okay, let me assume that I am still wrong. Let me give further benefit of doubt to Zakir Naik and accept that Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God and those two other entities which I, uh, which he did not mention, but which I mentioned. Words evolve. Meanings or connotations of words evolve through history. There is history behind words. So, let's take it that the word or that the, that the meaning, peace acquired by submission to the three entities is an evolved meaning or is an understood meaning in the religious parlance. Fine, I accept that. 
but why did Zakir Nayak not extend the same benefit to the meaning of Hinduism? If you have watched my previous video, video number 16, you may have noted that Zakir Nayak did not give any quarter to connotations acquired through history. He insisted on, on, on referring to works of different people, focusing on the secularity of the word Hindu. That means the word Hindu is purely geographical and has no religious connotation and very objectively, very mercilessly he was objective and secular. But in the case of Islam, he is overflowing with beliefs. He has cited no reference, he has cited no work and is feeding his audience with beliefs, beliefs and beliefs. But that allowance he did not make with the word Hindu. This double standard is not acceptable. Anyway, let's see what he says next. And this word Islam occurs in several places in the Quran and Sahih Hadith, including in the Quran, Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, and Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 85. Okay, so now he says that the word Islam occurs in several places in the Holy Quran and he has cited some chapters, verses. It's fine, I have no comment on that, it's fine. Let's see what he says next. Any person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Almighty God, to Allah, he is called as a Muslim. Oh my God! Has Zakir Naik forgotten his Islam? Why is he repeatedly giving an incomplete definition of Islam? A Muslim is not a person who only submits his will to God. As we saw in verse 59 of chapter 4 of the Holy Quran, a Muslim is he who obeys or submits his will to God, number one, to the messenger, yes, Prophet Muhammad, number two, and to those in charge among you, among them, yes, number three. So there are three entities to which uh, I, I hate repeating myself, but I have to. There are three entities. Everybody submits to God. Every theist has submitted his will to God, but every theist is not a Muslim. I can't believe that Zakir Nath has forgotten his Islam. Or is he deliberately trying to underplay the definition? Your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, let's see what is your next. And this word Muslim occurs in several places in the Quran and Sahih Hadith, including in the Quran, Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, and Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33. Okay, fine. No comment. It's fine. Let's see what is here next. Many people have the misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 1400 years ago and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on earth. What is the source of his information? Zakir Naik showed no respect for any religious connotation in the word Hindu. But for the word Islam, he is gushing forth with beliefs, assumptions, with no backing whatsoever from any independent source. There are also other religions which make the same claim. Hinduism says that it has been around for eternity. It will be around for eternity. It was around even before man set foot on earth. It was there with the... With the the demigods or the devis and devatas as we say in the heavens. What is the source of Zakir Naik's pontification to his audience? That Islam is the religion that has been around from day one. He has to prove it by credible independent sources, which he hasn't. Secular history books say that Hinduism is the world's most ancient surviving uh, religion. One doesn't know, it has no it has no date of birth. One can argue that the word Hinduism was not used for most of history. That's okay, that's a, that's a matter of jargon or semantic. It's not important. The concept is, the concept of Hinduism, that is the concept of Dharma, has been, is the most, is the world's most ancient surviving spiritual philosophy or belief system or religion. No serious anthropological study has even hinted of Islam being 
the original religion of man. On the contrary, anthropological studies have more or less confirmed the original religious practices of man were animistic and polytheistic. In other words, Hindu-like. Not Islam or Islam-like either. Let's see what he says next. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of this religion, but he is the last and final messenger sent by Almighty God, the last and final prophet. This again is a matter of belief. It's a separate topic altogether. But my question is simple. If Prophet Muhammad was the last and final prophet and messenger of God, who was Guru Nanak? Guru Nanak is the founder of Sikhism. Prophet Muhammad lived in the 7th century, whereas Guru Nanak belonged to the 15th century, a neat 800 years later. He is a much more recent personality in history than Prophet Muhammad. Why should, if I accept Zakir Naif's theory that Prophet Muhammad was the last and final prophet and messenger of God, then that would amount to rejection of Sikhism as a legitimate religion. Why should or on what grounds should I reject Sikhism? Guru Nanak is believed to have got his revelations directly from God. And the first lesson he gave, the first message he gave was that there are no Hindus, there are no Muslims, there are only people. A very God-like message from God. Anyway, the point is that both Guru Nanak and, um, and, and Prophet Muhammad are believed to have got messages from God. Guru Nanak got his revelations, his messages directly from God and Prophet Muhammad to got his revelations from God but via an intermediary in his case, via an angel called uh, Jibreel. The Ahmadi sect of Muslims, also known as Qadianis, believe that uh, Guru Nanak was a Muslim saint. But that's beyond the purview of this video. Point is that if we are to take Zakir Naik's theory that Prophet Muhammad was the last and final prophet, then that would amount to rejecting Sikhism. But we can't do that. There are 25 million Sikhs around the world. We just can't reject their religion. So there's an issue with the theory that Prophet Muhammad was the last and final prophet. Okay, Zakir Naik has not clarified whether Prophet Muhammad was the last and final prophet for the whole of mankind or only for Arabs. If he was only for Arabs, then the issue is resolved. But the problem arises if Zakir Naik says that Prophet Muhammad was prophet and messenger for all of mankind. Then we have to answer the question, then he has to answer the question, what about Sikhism? How do you explain the phenomena called Sikhism? Which today has approximately 25 million followers. But he did not clarify that. Maybe he will in the course of his talk, but not as of now. Let's see what Akhi Nayak has to say next. Let us first understand what are the sacred scriptures in these two great religions. Okay, that's a new topic. I'll cover it in my next video. Before I conclude, let me clarify that it was and it is not my intention to offend anybody's religious sentiment. Because I believe that religion is private to the individual. But if some people take advantage of freedom of expression to flaw other people's religious beliefs and practices, then I too have the moral and legal right to do critical review of the discourses made in the public domain by such people. I hope you will understand. Thank you.